Hi guys, Bert Kammerer here with SAB Heli Division, and today I have a couple of uh, tips and pointers I want to give you uh, concerning the HPS2 and the HPS3 heads. Uh, we've received some comments and some questions from some pilots, and uh, I've seen uh, a couple of pilots uh, do a couple of things that are actually not quite exactly the way they should be done. So, just want to give you again a couple of minor tips and tricks with. Um, on how to set up and how to maintain your HPS to HPS 3 heads. Um, the first thing I want to talk about has to do with the assembly of the head itself. Um, as you guys know, the HPS 2 and HPS 3 have independent spindle shafts. And the spindle shafts look just like this. So basically on the HPS 2, of course, you only have two spindle shafts. And on the HPS 3, you have three spindle shafts. And they all provide independent dampening. Um, so as you assemble this head, basically the spindle shaft goes into the hub and then you have a pin that goes through this hole on the shaft, again goes through the hub and then the shaft has two flats um, and then they get held by these screws right here on top of the hub. So the first thing that you should consider is using a little bit of grease when you install this on the hub. So basically what you want is just a little bit of synthetic grease in between the hole here on the spindle and, and the pin itself. Um, this will help uh, lubricate this section a little bit to where there will be a little bit less wear over time. So basically, um, as you insert the spindle shaft on your hub, right here on the HPS2 for example, make sure obviously the hole is aligned with the hub hole right there. And as you insert the, the pin, make sure that the flats are facing up because again, you want to make sure those screws right there are making contact with the flat Otherwise, that pin can shift during flight, and uh, you really don't want that to happen. It will not come off, but it'll definitely create a lot of wear um, in, in the actual met, uh, aluminum, in the metal itself, sorry, in the um, steel itself. So once those flats are facing up, then you go ahead and you tighten the screws, just like so. And uh, use um, a decent amount of Loctite, just don't overdo the Loctite because it'll make it very, very difficult to remove the screws later on. If you have to remove these screws to replace your spindle shaft, um, that's another important tip right here, is be very careful. If you've used a lot of Loctite in the past and, and, and it, you feel when you're going to loosen this up that it's just way too tight, just stop. Don't, don't try to, don't try to uh, loosen it up using a lot of force. If this is not backing out kind of smoothly, again, stop because you run the risk. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it could happen. You run the risk of breaking the head of the screw simply because these are very small screws. Um, and if you break the head of the screw, now you're going to end up with the rest of the screw inside the hub itself, and it's just going to be practically impossible to remove. So you might, at that point, you've pretty much render your whole hub useless. So if you need to remove the screw, I recommend you use some kind of heating device. Uh, for example, like a torch or just use a heat gun and just heat it up real well and get it really nice and hot. And that'll what that'll do is that'll help break down the Loctite. And then when it's time to loosen up the screw, it'll be much easier to do so and you won't run any risk of potentially breaking the head of the screw. So that's all I got for tips on that. The next thing I want to talk about is the preload on the head. Um, the HPS2 and HPS3 once again have independent, independent spindle shafts, meaning you have independent dampening throughout the system. And that does improve your tracking and forward flight and so forth. So if you're going to do 3D though, you need really hard 3D I mean by that. You have to tighten the dampening as much as you can. So you have to put a lot of shims in between your hop and your blade grip and tighten it a lot. But basically that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having the independent dampening because in order to really enjoy the the advantages of having this kind of dampening you have to have a little bit of dampening itself of course so you do want some dampening in the system and when you have dampening just make sure that it's not too much a good way to check is just once you've put your head together and you've went out there and you flew it a few times say three four five times come back land a helicopter put it on the bench and with your blades on just check to see how much dampening you have and the whole goal is if, if you basically lift up your blade and you let it go and it's falling on its own like this one is doing it means you need a little bit less dampening than that than that that is just way too much and how do you increase dampening you just remove the blade grip you add another shim in this location put your blade grip back on 
um, and that'll tighten your dampening. So just make sure that it's not excessive. Use common sense. Um, last but not least con concerning the three bladed rotor heads especially is tracking on this head is very important. But tracking a three bladed rotor head is not as easy as tracking a two bladed rotor head where you can just make an adjustment to one of the linkages on your two bladed head, go and hover and see if it's tracking. And if it's worse, you just land and you go in the other direction until you get it to track. Here, you can't really guess it because you have three blades. So what you need to do is get some nice tracking tape Put it on one of the blades and pick up the helicopter and the hover and take a look at that blade and see if the blade is high or low and then start adjusting that blade. Um, if that doesn't get you as close as you want to go, then put the tracking tape on another blade and do the same. And at that point, I assure you, you're going to have perfect tracking. But tracking is really, really important. Also, when you first fly this rotor head, the three-bladed HPS-3 rotor head, make sure that on your flyberless system, your cyclic gain is the lowest possible. In other words, just go to the lowest possible setting that you can dial in on your flyberless system um, and start adjusting from there. And the reason for that is you have so much um, inherent stability on a three-bladed rotor head that if your cyclic gain is too high on your flyberless system, you are going to potentially develop some really nasty aileron oscillation that could cost, uh, potentially cause some damage to your model. So start with your gain really, really low and start increasing the gain flight after flight until it starts to feel good to you. So that's all I have for now, just a few tips and tricks. So I hope this was useful and I'll see you guys on the next video.